<laughs> well, hello everyone and welcome to this month's edition of our book recommendations. I'm really excited about this particular issue because we actually have the author of the book actually with us today. So normally you just hear me telling you about the books and what I've learned from the books, but today we have the author. And so this is Gary McIntosh and Gary is professor of leadership at the Talbot School of Theology at Biola. And it's actually leadership and management, leadership right. and yeah, management. Right. And uh, I've been reading Gary's books uh, as long as he's been writing them. Uh, I think, and they've greatly influenced me, some of the best stuff on church growth and church leadership that you'll find every, anywhere. And you got a brand new book out, so tell us about that one. Uh, the book is called Taking Your Church to the Next Level, What Got You Here Won't Get You There. I love that subtitle. Yeah, yeah I actually wanted to call it What Got You Here Won't Get You There, but uh, there was a business book that beat me to the title. Oh, yeah. So I had to use it as a subtitle. Yeah, well, you wanted to call it, uh, what was it, uh, Peter Drucker, written by Peter Drucker, and they wouldn't let you do that? They either. wouldn't let me do that, yeah. no. no they had made me use my own name. Yeah. Well, Gary, tell us about uh, that book. Uh, why did you write it? Who is it for? And what are the things we can learn? I wrote it because uh, the two main factors that seem to influence churches are, uh, number one, how old the church is. Not how old the people are, huh. but how old the church is. So we all know that younger churches, new plants tend to grow faster than older churches. And so there's a, clearly a difference between a 10 year old church and a 50 year old church. Uh, and so I wanted to talk about that aspect. And the other aspect was the differences between small, medium and large churches, uh, which I wrote about in another book, but I wanted to give more detail. And so I uh, actually divided the church into uh, 10 different sizes starting with 35 all the way up to 6,000 and uh, and talked about that. So one half of the book talks about the life cycle issues of a church and the other half talks about the size issues. And then what I do is I put those together and uh, kind of integrate them together. So, you know, a, a church that's 50 people and 50 years old certainly has certain issues that a church of uh, 1,000 and uh, 10 years old doesn't have. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. I was particularly intrigued by the life cycle uh, stuff that you talked about. Give us an overview of those life cycles and help us, uh, those of us who are listening, how can we identify where we are in that cycle? Basically, the uh, first uh, five years or so of a new church's life, uh, the church is just emerging and uh, kind of getting stabilized. And we all know that usually when a new church makes it uh, to at least five years old, it usually makes it. And if it's going to uh, uh, fall apart and disintegrate, it usually does it within the first five wow. years. Sort of like uh, businesses in the United States, when a person starts a new business, if it makes it the first five years, it usually makes it for many years. Uh, businesses fail quite uh, heavily in the first five years. Uh, then uh, between years five and 15, uh, usually are the best growth years of a church's life. In, in fact, a lot of church growth research over the last 50 years uh, has shown that for most churches, they reach their peak in attendance somewhere around the 20th year of their life. And so for most years, that first, I mean, for most churches, that first 20 years is as good as it's ever going to get. Now, is there anything you can do? Can you catch a cycle and take it to the next level? Well, that's the whole thing about the life cycle, because typically what happens with a church is once they pass that 20th uh, birthday, they tend to lose their vision. Uh, everything's kind of driven by vision. And, and when a new church planter comes into a community, they come in with lots of excitement, motivation, vision. And usually by the 20th year or so, that vision has been accomplished. And then the, the church planter and the people basically relax. Yeah. And they kind of say, oh, we've been working hard for 20 years. Let's relax and just enjoy the fruits of our labor. But then what happens is the church gets on a plateau. And then gradually, about 40 years later, the church begins to decline. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the United States, most churches don't live much past about 90 years old, and then they close their doors. That's very interesting. Uh, there are some real old churches in the United States, two or 300 years old, but that's a rarity. Yeah. Uh, so you know, what the book is about is to just help pastors and church leaders identify where they are on that life cycle, and then to address what is it gonna take to creating a new cycle. Uh, because uh, one of the things about a church is, uh, unlike a human being, I mean, we go through a life cycle too. Uh, I can't go back and be 18 years old, but a church can. Uh, a church can actually go back and start a new curve, a new cycle, and uh, go through another 20 good years of growth and development. Yeah, well, that was one of the things I enjoyed about uh, Gary's book, is not only did it help you diagnose where you are, but it also encouraged you 
about how to go to that next level. So it's a very inspiring book, and it's called Taking It to the Next Level by Gary McIntosh, and it's this month's book of recommendations. I hope you'll pick that up. And Gary, I, I, I just want to keep you one more moment because you've written some classic books in the past that we still use in our telecoaching network, and two of my favorites are Biblical Church Growth and Finding Them and Keeping Them. And now, do you yes. have a favorite that you would add to that? Well, I think my favorite's one size doesn't fit all. Oh, yeah. Uh, because uh, a lot of pastors don't understand that they have to change their own leadership style uh, as a church grows from being a small church to a medium-sized church to a large church. And uh, we all know that probably 85% of churches are under 200 in size. And one of the major reasons is the pastors just don't adjust their style. Uh, they start out pastoring a small church, and then they, the church grows, and then they do not adjust to being more of a leader. Uh, small churches typically need pastors who are loving caregivers. Uh, but when the church gets over 200, the pastor must adjust to become more of a visionary uh, leader, uh, setting direction, delegating, uh, giving away work to other people. And uh, what I wrote that book for is to help pastors understand you got to make some adjustments in your leadership style if you want to see your church continue to grow numerically. Yeah, I'm seeing a trend in some of your work. Yes. Uh, you're constantly pushing us to change and revision and rethink. Right. So thank you very much. Thank you. How can people get in touch with you? Well, they can uh, reach me at uh, churchgrowthnetwork.com. Uh, that would be the easiest uh, way to do it. Good. So you can find all of Gary's books there. You can also reach him for the uh, consulting and speaking engagements that he has coming up. And, hey, maybe you even want to check out a class uh, at his seminary sometime. Dr. McIntosh, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Nelson. I appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next month for another book recommendation. God bless you.